When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we identified some of the sources of both sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide when it comes to industrial and natural sources. What we're going to do it today in this video is we're going to describe some of those reactions. So I'll read the actual top point. This says, describe using equation examples of chemical reactions that release sulfur dioxide and chemical reactions that release, release oxides of nitrogen. So again, we have to describe. So last time we identified, now we're going to describe. But we also have to describe using chemical reactions. It's important as well. So these chemical reactions we will go through in this video. And make sure to remember some of them as well, if you can. What I'll do first is I'll quickly go over the periodic table again. And just to underline where these oxides are. So we've got nitrogen here. And we've got sulfur here. Now sulfur by itself is actually a solid. So green means all the green ones are solid. And nitrogen by itself in normal state is gas. But the one we're talking about here is so sulfur dioxide, SO2. This is also gas. So we're talking mostly about gas oxides here. Gas oxides. So these are ones which we can find in our air itself, not solid rock or liquid. But these are gas by nature. And for the first one, we'll talk about, we'll go describe some of the processes involved when it comes to production of sulfur oxides. And the one we have to focus on is sulfur dioxide. Remember that di just means two. So as you can see with this chemical formula, S O2, sulfur is the S, di means two oxides, SO2. Now we went for these last time, but we're going to go for them in a bit more detail in this video. The first one is the combustion of coal. It's the combustion of coal. So here we've got a coal that has sulfur in it right there, and it looks more or less harmless. But again, what you can imagine if you were to look at the sulfur containing coal, it would be the vast majority would have these CH bonds, which are hydrocarbons, but there would be a bit of it which has sulfur in it. So again, usually a tiny portion of it has sulfur in it. And what that is, is this here, FeS2, which is iron dioxide. Now this is solid because it's part of the actual coal. But what we do when we actually use a coal power plant, so this is a coal power plant right here. What we do is we actually get the energy out of it, but in the process, we smelt not just the hydrocarbons, but we also smelt this iron disulfur. And in the presence of oxygen, always has to become, be combusted in the presence of oxygen to produce a solid. But the most important part is it also produces these eight moles of sulfur dioxide. And this here is obviously our sulfur oxide. So the chemical chemi equation number one you should remember is this one here. And this just describes what happens if we have coal, which, we, which has some of this iron disulfur in it, which is just part of the coal itself. When that combusts in the presence of oxygen, which happens in a coal power plant, when that combusts to produce sulfur dioxide, it will also produce some energy, but it's sulfur dioxide as well, which will then escape and obviously get for these chimneys and get polluted in the air. So the air is then, part more of it is sulfur dioxide. That's chemical reaction number one. Number two is this here. And this is called Shall Copy Right. And the way I can remember this, for whatever reason, they have the name Copy and Right, as in copyright. So it's just Shall Copy Right. But that's what this here is, which is our copper has this copper in it, but also sulfur in it. And what we do here, this is our smelting process. So this chemical reaction describes our smelting of, of iron. So smelting, or not of iron, but of metal. Smelting of metal. So what we do, we have this mineral here, this child copyright. And what we want to do is we want to be able to get the iron, the copper. This is what we want. But we have other stuff attached to it, like the iron and sulfur, which we don't want. We want to have the copper by itself. So what we do is we add five moles of oxygen and two moles of silicon dioxide, which is sand. We add that all together. 
And then what happens is we have copper, molten copper. So we have it by itself. That, that's what we wanted to do. And we also produce four moles of the sulfur dioxide, which is again, that's the sulfur oxide, sulfur dioxide. And then this here is just our gangi, like it's just waste stuff that we will throw away later. But the idea with this whole process was that we wanted to get copper, but the problem is we all got copper in the end, but we also produced sulfur dioxide, which obviously was a problem because it produced acidic grain. So here this was our char copyright, the original mineral, and then we used that to produce copper. So this was our copper, or like our copper coins. But yeah, we did produce some sulfur dioxide in the process. This is a chemical reaction number two, you should remember. And this here is just how we produce sulfur trioxide. The, the actual dot are not asking for this, but this, we'll go over this now because we'll go over it again later. And here we just have our sulfur dioxide. We add an oxygen to it. So it's the oxidation reaction. We add oxygen to it. Then we produce from what? Two sulfur dioxide and an oxygen molecule. We produce two sulfur trioxide. So this was the sulfur di another sulfur oxide, but it had one more oxygen to it. And it's actually a bit more acidic than the other one beforehand. And in terms of its chemical structure, this is SO2 and this is SO3. And you can just see it has the oxygens here. So it's got three here for SO3 and, and two here for SO2. But apart from that, it's the same. But that was for uh, sulfur. And when it comes to nitrogen, we've got nitrogen oxides. So, we're, so you write it as this, NO, so nitrogen oxide. And the X stands for any number. So either it's with one or with two O's. If it's for one O, it's nitrogen monoxide. 2 is nitrogen dioxide. So we will talk about both these in this video, how they get produced. And we said that our air itself usually has, so these are the different things in our air, the different molecules. N2, so nitrogen makes up the vast majority of about 78% of it is nitrogen mold, a molecule of nitrogen gas. Whereas about 21% is oxygen gas. And the rest is just a combination of these. But the vast majority are nitrogen and oxygen. So they're in the air itself. So here, this here, NO2 and O2, that's just the, in the air itself. And the air that comes into our engines. So this air will go into our engines. And usually nothing happens. So usually these won't react because they're by themselves. They're quite happy to be stay by themselves. But if we have high temperatures, which we would have in our engine, so in an engine we have high temperatures, what happens is this N2 reacts with this O2 and forms something called nitrogen monoxide. So this was our nitrogen oxide, one of our nitrogen oxide reactions. So remember this chemical equation for nitrogen oxide. It is N2 plus O2, so the things in our air, reacting in high temperatures to form two moles of nitrogen oxide, monoxide. And this happens in our engine. So what you can imagine again, when it comes to our exhaust, some of the stuff which comes out of our exhaust, most of it will be CO2, but some of it will be this NO as well. So both quite damaging for our environment. Now it says also how, how do we produce nitrogen dioxide because it says the oxides of nitrogen. So nitrogen dioxide will be produced this way. This is again the oxidation of nitrogen monoxide. So we've got nitrogen monoxide in our reactants and we oxidize it by adding oxygen to it. So this is oxidized. And then it becomes two moles of nitrogen monoxide. Remember, this is the acidic version, and this was the neutral version. Nitrogen monoxide is still dangerous, but it's not, not acidic, whereas nitrogen dioxide is acidic, so it'll produce acid rain. So this was the second chemical equation you should remember. So for this dot point, describe using chemical e examples of chemical reactions that release sulfur dioxide and chemical reactions that release oxides, oxy oxides of nitrogen, sorry. Um, so yeah, remember the actual chemical equations, but also remember not just the equations, but what happened so you, can, so you can describe the actual chemical equation. So for example, for this, not just the chemical equation, but that this happens in our actual engines when we combust fuel because air itself has NO2 and O2 in it and the high temperatures makes that air come together. So the, some of the N2 and O2 come together to produce hydrogen monoxide. Uh, so not just the chemical equation, but be able to describe the actual reaction as well. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.